Bang! Needs Knives. I'm Jared. My lovely wife Kara is at work and today we are rev doing the review on the Artisan Sea Snake by Mike Emler. This knife did just drop so you can get it right now for $53. They have three versions, green, tan, and black. I just ordered mine. I ordered a black version. I almost ordered the green one. And then I almost ordered the tan one. Then I wound up settling for the black one. Don't ask me. Um, I did hear that there's a drop point version in the works. So, you know, that'll be sometime in the future. I don't know how far in the future. But, you know, you can expect it sometime in the future. Anyways, let's get into this knife. So I will talk about and show some of my use here in just a minute. But let's first just go over the stats. So, okay, so... The total length is six and seven eighths inches long with a 3.1 inch blade. Here it is next to the Benchmade Bug Out. You can see it's a bit smaller than the Bug Out, but it's a great comparison to the Benchmade Mini Griptilian. Also, a great size comparison to the Civivi Elementum. Then here is the Rat 2, which the Rat 2 is a little bit longer. And then here is the Hinder 3 inch. The best uh, comparison that I think, like for ergos and grip and stuff like that. I don't have right here. Kara had to take it to work. It seems like that happens to me every time I'm doing a video and I'm looking for one specific knife. She's got it in her pocket. Here's the Giant Mouse Ace Biblio. Um, it also is a great size comparison. Here's the Mini Archbishop that I was talking about. And you can see it does have a little bit of similarities when it comes to the grip. You know, not exact, obviously, but, you know, it's just similar. And you can see the link really quick. You know, the mini archbishop's obviously smaller, but they resemble each other's grip. Now, this knife is amazingly thin with amazing blade geometry. Let's talk about my use really quick. So when using this knife, being only a hundred thousandths blade stock thickness and fourteen thousandths behind the edge thickness, it passed through materials with ease. Great blade geometry really shows using a knife like this. Even with some of the thicker parts, also with tape, it still performed great. The edge performance also surprised me. In all honesty, it kind of felt like it got even sharper after using it. Another area where possibly the best performance came from was with draw cuts. It was a lot like using a, tip, a utility blade, and the, hip, the tip held up great. Um, I was kind of expecting a little bit more edge wear than I got, but and also it came with a factory edge. So even with the factory edge and using it, you know, it, it took a little bit of wear, but at first it felt like it was only getting sharper, but I did use it quite a bit. Because um, I really wanted to try the steel out. I thought about sharpening it, but I do have to pass it on to other people. And the thing is, is that the edge is still fine. I honed it right back with zero problems. And I watched Mike Emler on his videos do, you know, bang this thing through, uh, you know, copper wire and stuff. And it did come with a pretty good nick on the blade. It literally honed right out with just a few passes on um, my ceramic plate. Now, not the ceramic rod, I didn't put a micro bevel on it, I just honed the edge back to true. And it honed back great. I mean, the straps back great, so you can keep an edge on this thing for quite some time, even for a budget to mid-grade steel. I mean, that's what's kind of amazing about, you know, some, you know, steels that are, uh, I guess you would say, has a simple makeup, you know, 
um, if that makes sense, you know, like the, 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 the makeup of the steel is pretty simple, is that you can hone them back really good. They react well to straps, and this reacts very good. Now, it is a flat ground blade. The blade geometry is amazing. Like I said before, 100 thousandths, 14 thousandths behind the edge. You can see you can get a lot of great sharpenings out of this thing before it'll really even get thicker. I mean, yeah. And using this thing, I mean, it's like using a utility knife. Now, the one place where I thought it was going to shift, because it is thin, you know, it's very thin. I thought I was going to get a lot of shift, right? Well, I didn't really hold it like this. To be honest, I held it more like this. You know, did my cuts, but there were times where I held it, you know, just like this. And did cuts like this, you know, going through materials. And I was expecting a little more shifting. But to be honest, because, I don't know if it's because the blade geometry is so thin that it just passes through materials so easily that I really didn't get that much shift. But even with tough parts where I really had to, you know, crank down, I didn't get much shift. At least not as much as I thought I was going to get, which was pretty surprising because I was kind of expecting that just a little bit. The tip I was also kind of worried about because it is a thin tip. You know, it's a um, more of a utility use tip. Now, the one thing with having a utility tip is it can chip. You know, they can chip, they can uh, wear down, but this didn't. It uh, It's still perfectly fine. Um, you can kind of see some of the spots where I honed it. And uh, it never chipped or anything like that. So it's held up really good. Now, I wouldn't want to drop it on a tile floor or scrape it against concrete or anything. But as long as, like, say, if you're cutting something out and whatever's underneath is a, a a fine material not like ceramic or concrete or anything you know using the tip should be just fine but you know it's something you do want to think about you don't want to drop or anything like that the i did not carry it on my hip i i was going to take mike's other knife and i was going to take the belt loops off and i was going to this is his stonefish uh, Mike Nummler Stonefish, this one's done by Wee. I was going to take and take the belt loops off of this and put it on this, but I wound up just carrying it around my neck because I don't really carry neck knives, so I kind of wanted to try it out. And, you know, I'm not a neck knife guy. I'm just not. So, no big deal. And then I also threw it in my back pocket. I just kind of spun this around, carried it in my back pocket. No big deal. Um, but... <clears throat> I could see carrying this thing being, you know, nice and comfortable. Like I said, I didn't carry it on my hip, but, you know, it's it's a small package. So, and I've carried other knives this size, smaller and bigger on my hip, and they were just fine. The retention is great. You get no rattle, no up and down, no nothing, at least out of this version or this, you know, specific one. And then the pop on it, when you take it out, you have enough where your finger can get right under there and then you can either just pinch where you're basically just pinching your fingers together and it pops like that or you can just do the thumb trick where you just pop it forward either way works just fine um the squeeze works really good or you know like i said the thumb the choil area nice and big i can fit the whole meat of my finger in there um Carrying it and using it like this was um, really nice too because, you know, the small shortness of the handle really fits good in my palm, you know, for my hands. Um, it is small, but, you know, that's kind of the beauty here because, you know, it's it's having, you know, a little utility blade that you can use like a little razor on you at all times. You can use it to pick things. You can use it to, to carve things out you know, do your little finer tasks. And that's why, you know, I really wanted one of these. I wanted a little fixed blade warning to, to use as a utility blade at work. Now, let's talk about some bad things. So there's one specific bad thing that really stands out to me. And it's right there. I don't care that it's made in China. I just don't want it written on the knife. I already know that. I don't need it. Now, one thing is that it's very tiny. 
you know, but I, I don't really like when knives say China on them. It's not that I care that it's made in China. I just, you know, I don't know. If it says USA, I'm okay with it though. <laughs> so my only complaints really are, you know, the little China logo and then the G10 is a little slick. It could be a little grippier. Other people might disagree. Um, they might really like that it's nice and smooth like this. I would have preferred just a little bit more grip. Um, but yeah, you know what? I should have put this up next to the Feldspar. Here it is next to the CJRB Feldspar just because, you know, Artisan makes this. I don't know why I didn't do this. It is a tiny, this is the mini Feldspar, by the way. It is a tiny bit smaller than the Feldspar. Sorry, I should have did that earlier. But, um, but yeah, using this thing was fantastic. It really shines in the performance area because of the blade geometry and the tip. Now, you uh, you know, it is a little thin in the hand, so it's something that you definitely, it's something that, you know, you're not going to get a grip on like you would something thicker, but since it passes through materials the way it does, it's not that big of a deal. Now, with a big, thick knife, something, you know, that's thick behind the edge, you really need a good grip because you got to muscle it through things. With something small and thin like this, you don't have to put as much muscle. Now, another area I saw it was I, you know, was using another knife and um, the knife I just showed you. And it was wanting to pull the stuff out of my hand. Now, with this, since it goes through so easy, you know, this hand gets a break on hanging on to the material I'm cutting. Um... But yeah, all the fit and finish is done really good. The G10 is nice and soft. It's not aggressive at all. I, you know, maybe it might be good with a little bit more aggressive of a G10, but it's hard to say that without, you know, putting it on there and feeling it because this is very comfortable and I do kind of like it this way also in the same breath. There's not too many bad things about this. I mean, there's not a lot that can be bad. You know, it's pretty simple, which I really like simplistic designs like that because then you have less problems, less things that can go wrong, and, you know, it's just simple. So there's not that much I can really talk about. I like Mike Emler's design. I like the grind. Um... It's nice and thin behind the edge. I love the choil. love the blade shape. It is, uh, the grind is nice and even, as far as I can tell. I would have liked to have sharpened it, but since I have one coming, I'll just sharpen my own. I do want to pass this on to some more reviewers. Um, I'm not going to say it in this video who, but I am going to be passing this on to people. So, hopefully, uh... You guys see it here pretty soon. You know, hopefully you guys just go and buy them all out because it really helped out Mike Emler, I'm sure. I mean, I'm sure, well, I don't know how much it helped him out, but it would definitely make him happy. I could see that because, you know, it's his knife. Who wouldn't want to design a knife and then have it sell out right away? Of course. Now, you know, obviously, I don't, I wouldn't call myself that biased. I like Mike. Mike's a friend. So I obviously want to see this sell. But I wouldn't, I still wouldn't say anything that's, um, that's not true from my perspective. The G10 is shadow boxing the tang. As you can see, you can see the, the tang protrudes a little bit. If it's coming up on camera pretty good, you can kind of see how it outlines the G10. Like I said, the G10 is nice and soft and chamfered really good. I could see this being very easy to make my card of scales. I'd like to see them do that with this. I'm guessing if this does really well, they'll do that because that would be like the ultimate to me. Like if this was in my Carta, whoo, I'd pay ten, an extra $10 for my Carta. I don't know. Maybe it might be $20 more. I don't know. I'm just, you know, talking crap, but yeah, it's a fantastic knife. There's not a lot of bad here. Um, and I really like it. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, go and check it out and let me know what you guys think. And like I said, there will be a drop point version coming very soon. So if you if the Warncliffe isn't your style, 
then yeah, maybe a drop point might be more up your alley. The jimping, it could be a little sharper. It works, you know, like when I put pressure, it really works. But the jimping could be a little bit better. Um, I mean, it's not bad, though. So I, I can't really call it a bad. Um, and a lot of people might disagree. Uh, I'm kind of picking right now because it's not bad at all. As a prototype, this thing's pretty sharp. Well done. Um, all right, guys, there you guys go. Um, thank you, Mike, for sending this to me to check out, and it's really awesome. And, yeah, thanks for such an awesome design. I've been waiting for something like this, and now I got one coming. I appreciate it, bud. Peace.